one overlooked vitamin improved bone density by up to 4% and reduced fractures by 64% in people with osteoporosis, yet hardly anyone talks about it. That nutrient, vitamin K2. Here's what you can expect to learn in this video. One, why vitamin K2 is forgotten. Then we'll talk about by how much does vitamin K2 improve bone density and reduce fracture risk, alluding to the slide previously. Then we'll talk about the mechanisms. How does vitamin K2 work? After that, we'll discuss how much do you need, as well as what foods do you actually need to eat in order to get the necessary amount of K2. And we'll also distinguish between vitamin K2 foods versus vitamin K2 supplements. And lastly, and tell you about one other nutrient besides vitamin K2 that strengthens bones. And no, it's not calcium or vitamin D. Before we jump in, who am I? My name is Igor. I'm the author of the Amazon best-selling book called Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets. As well, I run an online personal training company that specializes in osteoporosis reversal. As well, I'm not just some random guy on the internet with an opinion. I'm actually a personal trainer who works one-on-one -on -one with people to reverse their osteoporosis, like Darlene here, who was a jock until the age of 46 when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, went through uh, chemotherapy, radiation, and eventually estrogen blockers, um, which caused her bone density to go down, but we were able to turn that around. Here's Laura, who had severe osteoporosis, including a family history of it, and we were able to turn that around. And Anne, who was active, ate healthy, and despite that was shocked when she was diagnosed with, with osteoporosis, and yet we were able to improve her bone density as well. So now let's jump in. Why is vitamin K2 forgotten? Because at first, when vitamin K was discovered, they only knew about vitamin K1. The word, uh, uh, the, so vitamin K1 is responsible for clotting. In German, the word clotting starts with a K, and so that's what vitamin K K at the time, they didn't know there was a K1 and K2, but at the time it was discovered, they only knew about the blood clotting function of vitamin K. Then they realized decades later, oh, there is a different vitamin K, that's vitamin K2. What vitamin K2 does is it directs calcium into the bones and out of the arteries. Most people, including doctors, still focus on calcium and vitamin D overlooking vitamin K2. Which brings up a real question. By how much does vitamin K2 improve bone density? Well, here's a study titled Effect of Vitamin K on Bone Mineral Density. And what they found is, look at the highlighted part, the WMD, which stands for Weighted Mean Difference in Bone Mineral Density, relative change was 1.27%. What that means is the gap between people taking vitamin K2 and not taking K2 is 1.27%. In other words, if people's bone density declined by 1.27%, if they weren't on vitamin K2, but it stayed the same, if they were on vitamin K2, that's a 1.27 difference. Um, as well, another way to phrase it is if people did not take vitamin K2 and their bone density stayed the same, but those on vitamin K2 improved by 1.27%, that is a weighted mean difference. Here's another study titled, Does Vitamin K2 play a role in the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis for postmenopausal women. And yes, it improved bone density by anywhere from 1.40 to 3.98%, depending on a few different factors like, one, the duration of the study. Of course, the longer the study, the greater the improvement. Two, the location. Are we talking about the lumbar spine, total hip, or femoral neck? Three, dosage. So all of those factors make a difference in terms of how much does vitamin K2 improve bone density in people with osteoporosis. Now, it's not just about bone density, because as I've talked about in previous videos, some things improve bone density, like calcium, but they don't reduce fracture risk, and that's what really matters. So by how much does vitamin K2 reduce fracture risk? Here's a study titled, Vitamin K2 Effectively Prevents Fractures and Sustains lumbar bone mineral density in osteoporosis. In this study, researchers recruited 241 people with osteoporosis and divided them into two groups. Group number one received vitamin K2. Group number two received a placebo. In other words, they thought they were getting vitamin K2, but they weren't. After two years of this, what happened was astounding. The number of fractures in the vertebrae dropped by 64% in the K2 group, and the number in a number of fractures at the wrist dropped by 50%. 
which is extremely, extremely important. It's not just about bone density. Much more importantly is fractures. And vitamin K2 is extremely impressive when it comes to that. So how does it work? Um, one of the mechanisms is that it boosts collagen in bone and strengthens connections between collagen molecules. So not only does it increase the amount of collagen, it actually gives stronger interlinking. In other words, there is there are greater connections between the, the, the collagen peptides. Also, it activates osteoblasts. Those are bone building cells and reduces the activity of osteoclasts, bone breaking cells. So it has multiple mechanisms by which it strengthens bones, which begs the question, how much do you need? Well, the research, the scientific research doesn't actually differentiate between vitamins K1 and K2. It groups all vitamin K together, which is all, why all you see is recommendations for vitamin K broadly without distinguishing. So this is purely my opinion based on the research available. It is my opinion that people with osteoporosis need a minimum of 15 micrograms per day. So where do you get all that K2? Here are the best vitamin K sources. Egg yolks range widely from negligible to over 180 milligrams. So let's say, let, let's go not even halfway, but to be conservative, let's, it's about, let's say about one third. So 67 micrograms of vitamin K2 in one egg yolk. Eel, I get, it's not, I get that it's not commonly eaten, but 100 grams of eel contain 63 micrograms of vitamin K2. Additional sources that are good are cheese. Uh, different types of cheese range from 10 to 55 micrograms per 100 grams of cheese. By the way, one slice of cheese or one cube of cheese is about 30 grams. Prunes, that's why they are so popular for osteoporosis. That's 23 micrograms per 100 grams of prunes. That's approximately six to nine prunes. Beef liver contains 11 micrograms per 100 grams. And chicken, that's 10 micrograms per 100 grams. Uh, 100 grams, by the way, is just uh, just over three ounces. Most people eat way more than that. So chicken alone, if you just had one chicken breast, uh, four ounces or more, you've met your daily requirements. Um, as for supplements, vitamin K2 comes in two different categories. One is called MK4. The other one is called MK7. Most research is on MK4 and MK7 has almost no research behind it. However, that doesn't stop a lot of supplement manufacturers from putting both into one supplement. It's perfectly fine if you have a supplement that is MK4 only or has um, very small amounts of MK7. It's also perfectly fine if it has both, okay? Just know that most of the research is done on MK4 exclusively. But there is one other nutrient equally important for bone strength. That nutrient, I can't reveal in this video, but I do talk about it in a different video, which is not available on YouTube. It is the Stronger Bones Checklist, six steps to improve bone density naturally. You can get that video by visiting this link on your screen right now, as well as in the description below.